All right, welcome everybody. Anthony here. It is Sunday, July 6th, 2025 at about 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I received these, this Pecron E3600 LFP on July 3rd. I did a quick video on it. Today I want to do just a little more of an overview of this unit. I purchased it with the Pecron trolley cart that is right there. You put it together, it comes with two side bags there. You could put some cords in. You've got a telescoping handle here that goes down. The unit fits in the cart perfectly. Transports, I would say, around your house, flat surface or carpet, no problem. Uh, going up steps and stuff like that, I haven't tried it. I would recommend that you carry the unit if you're taking it to a second floor and then put it on the cart up there. So what do we get here? We've got a 3,600 watt unit, 7,000 watt surge. The inverter is 3,600 watts. The capacity of the unit is 3,072 watts. And we've got a pure sine wave with the AC. Outputs and the dimensions are 17 and a half long, 12.1 inches wide, and 13.8 inches high. You've got two phone chargers, 15 watt max on the top, wireless chargers. I've got my little cheat notes here that I'm using. It comes with the manual. Again, the cart comes separate with these tools to put it together, this little bag. The unit itself came with this nice little rigid case. I've, I got the extra bonus 30 amp charging cable. So if you have capability of charging at 30 amps, whether it's at like a, an RV campground or from a generator, you could hook this in to the side of the unit, which is right here, where your AC cable goes, your regular AC cable. And you could charge this unit in about an hour with that 30 amp unit with the regular AC cord that is proprietary. I think it's about an hour and a half to two hours to charge it with this. I think it puts up to 1700 watts into the unit. And I had that on the other day when I did the overview and then this here you have your um, uh, overcurrent protection your ground and an interface there I think that's when you get extra batteries you've got an extra port on the side here to expand it this can be expandable up to four 3,000 watt batteries making this system a 15 kW or 15,000 watt or kilowatts 15 kilowatts of power You've got a DC and AC on off. This is the only way to turn the unit on and off. I put the little glow in the dark stickers on there that come with the unit. And uh, you just hold those momentarily on and off and the unit will come on and off. And then you have your touch screen here. I'm not going to go over in detail, but you got uh, a home. You've got, uh, I showed you this the other day, input and settings. It gives you your battery level, AC charging speed. You could charge it at a different rate from AC, and you could set that. And then you hit back about the equipment. Again, it gives you an overview. So lots of status reports with this unit. Again, I'm not 100% familiar with it, but... Um, on this side of that unit here is your solar input. Again, you have a barrel connector here for a single solar panel, and it gives you your voltage max and your watt max. So this is a 150 watt panel, which is going to take forever to charge this, but you can hook one up and you can max this out with the XT60 connectors that come with the unit. Uh, you could put 1,200 watts on each side making 2400 watts of input plus the 150 watt 
of there, of that uh, barrel plug. And so that's a good amount of solar. And you get in the rigid case here, you get the um, XT60 solar charger with the MC4 connectors. And then you get a parallel one with dual MC XT60, excuse me, with MC4. You get a small screwdriver and you get the car charger that'll charge this at um, like 100 watts, I think, from your car. But they make another unit that's $150 that you could hook to your battery and use your alternator while driving to charge this and other units at up to 500 watts. So that's my next purchase because I want to install that unit in the van to my battery. And if I'm on the road with this, I don't have to worry about solar as long as I'm driving at 500 watts while you're driving on a road trip. You could keep this topped off or charge it up in, you know, several hours while driving with no problem from that alternator uh, hookup. And so that's $150, which is pretty reasonable, I think. You've got handles here. The unit weighs 79 pounds. It's not super light. It's not super heavy. But uh, having the cart definitely helps, especially me here with my wife. She can get the unit into place once it's on the cart and, uh, you know, hook up whatever she needs to hook up. So with my thinking with this unit was, number one, to get it, expand it, with the extra batteries, but next week I'm getting a an outlet hooked up to my uh, fuse panel, my house panel, an extra um, trip uh, circuit to hook this or a generator to, and that way I could run certain circuits on my house in a grid down with this unit, expand it up to 15 kilowatt, and then upgrade my generator to be able to use a, get a generator with um, like a dual fuel generator that could produce 30 amps. And I could top this off, this unit alone here within an hour with the generator and then shut the generator, conserve the gas, and then run, say like a refrigerator, some basic lights and maybe a TV, uh, a fan, uh, a small air conditioner if I wanted to. And I went on Hobotech's channel, and he did a little worksheet here. And this is what this unit will run, basically. So an RV air conditioner, it'll run for about four and a half hours, depending on your RV, how it's set up. And then you could do that with this 30 amp AC outlet right here. You've got four pure sine wave AC outlets here. Okay, mama. That's enough. Sorry about the barking. That's Charlotte. Here is your 12 volt cigarette lighter, 10 amp max. Barrel plug. 12 volt, 5 amp max, and this one here, my RV is already set up for. I could plug my RV DC side of the house into this and run 12 volt, 30 amps, everything inside my RV that I need except the AC with this hook up here. And my RV is already set up for that. Your DC here, 100 watt USB-C, 18 watt USB-C, and then four 18 watt USB-A outlets. All in all, this unit is very well made, I think. You've got these little bumpers that come on and off if you wanted on the unit. Again, I'm going to be testing this, show you it. Next time I show it to you, I'm going to put it in the camper and show you how it um, can be hooked up in my camper, just like my Blue Eddy. 
and my Jackery that I use in the camper. But this definitely, this unit definitely gives me more expandability. And right off the bat, I could plug in my RV right to the actual unit. And if you guys remember in my RV, I put a, um, a pass-through, an outlet pass-through. I could keep this in the RV, run my unit, run my cord from the RV right into the RV and plug it into this and be self-contained inside the RV running this and then also put my foldable solar panels on this and keep it topped off while in the RV and say like a grid down or a off-grid camping type scenario. So all in all, I think um, having something like this, especially now with the uncertainty of all these um, weather events that we're having, having something like this as a backup with more wattage and more expandability is the way to go. And dollar for dollar, this one unit seems to be the least expensive to increase the power with each one of those extra batteries, I believe is about 900 bucks. So if you bought the whole 15 KW unit, um, I think it's under six grand for everything. So that's not bad considering that amount of power. And so that's my video on this this far today. Just wanted to show you guys more of a, a detailed view of the unit and um, give you my thoughts on it so far. As I use it, I'll do more updated videos. But I would recommend if you get this, have some type of cart, whether it's this one or one of those flat dollies that you get at the... Um, Home Depot or Lowe's, something to put it on with wheels uh, in your house to wheel it around because picking up 80 pounds and lugging it around, unless you're putting it down in one spot or on a table in a corner and you're just going to leave it there, that's fine. But having it on a cart to move it around, I think, is the way to go. And uh, so that's my video today. I'll come back with some more updates on this unit and uh, let you know my uh, feedback on it. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Stay ready and prepare for these uncertainties that are coming our way. You want to be able to stay off grid for a certain length of time and then with solar or generator uh, to be able to get this unit powered back up in a short order and back online again to power, especially things like your refrigerator, 12-volt refrigerator or AC refrigerator or freezers. That's definitely a bonus to have this type of unit that'll run a refrigerator for, you know, a day to two days, depending on your refrigerator. A 12-volt refrigerator, this will run for days and days. So think about that, what you have in place now, and what you're going to be needing to run in a grid-down power outage situation. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Anthony signing off. Stay ready.